Hey, the, my sophomore year, we lost in the uh, game before state to Haines City. To Haines City? Where yeah. you came up? I came out. That was in 93 when we lost. <laughs> you lost in 94. 94, I came out, but in 90, 92, 93, we lost to Haines City. No, my Fred brother. played my the world. Was running back. <laughs> nigga was playing out the graveyard. Ain't this a graveyard? Yeah, there's a graveyard right there. Cemetery. Hey, Fred, Cemetery hey. right next to them. They say he's going to bury you right there. Bruh. No, I afraid to I remember that. Was, it, was, it, was Dick Buckets really good, like playing with him on the same field? <laughs> hey, Night Train Lane. Yeah. Boy, say Fred, 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 113 years old. See, bro. but the thing is, I don't claim to be cute, but I'm sexier than you. You know what I'm saying? No, they be sleeping on me, Devin. They be sleeping on me. I ain't sleeping on you, man. You are, I, 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 they see it. All your life, see. huh? Yeah, I've been fighting my whole life. He start eating meat, then he turn into a man. Like, look at it. He, he, Ooh, what he got sexy. That boy ready, man. Hold up. Limitless, take a stomach cow, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, only vision I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless, take a stomach cow, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, hey, man, welcome to the pivot, bro. We're excited to have you. OG, Freddie T, Channing, I'm RC. Listen, man, subscribe, like. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, we're there. Uh, but more importantly, we're bringing you the best show anybody's bringing to you on all of these platforms. Uh, different guests, it's going to always be diverse. But today, what'd you do? Are you talking like a Pittsburgh Steeler today? Oh, no, I'm just saying. No, no, I'm just <laughs> what is going on, bro? Oh, no, I'm just, hey, listen, anytime, anytime I get a great safety on the set with me, man, it just make me feel at home. You know, I had Sean Taylor. One of my closest friends, Troy Palomalu, yeah. and Derwin James is doing a lot of the same things in Los Angeles, man. But it's so crazy. I hear so many stories about you, and most of those stories talk about the dude you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all understand the athletes. Should I watch you play DN and flip cats as a freshman at Florida State? But yeah. everybody talks about the leader. When I met you at the opening, though, everybody talked about the high school yeah. Derwin James, how much of a dog he was, how much of a leader he was, an alpha male. Where do you feel like all those things, because he always asks about being dogs. Yeah. Where do you feel like all those things started for you? I feel like it started for me with my mom's and pop, just watching how my dad grinded and how my mom go to work every day and then just still managed to go to gym and just make me go with her. We used to go to like Gold's Gym all the time. Like I was coming up in middle school growing up and I just used to like, I used to have to find time while she worked just to do stuff. And it was like, they had all the machines in there. So, I'm just learning new exercises, doing different stuff just to get right, man. And I always just had that work ethic just to work hard. Like, I felt like God blessed me with all the talent and stuff, but I just feel like my work ethic was really just, you feel me, what made me go. Like you say, that dog, like, it's, play, it's good players that I respect, yeah. and it's dudes that's dogs. Like, yeah, yeah. and I feel as if dudes that's out there like that, you look at them like, I don't want to run across him. Mm -hmm. And you one of them dudes, dudes yeah. don't want to, they don't want to catch that in cut that they know you sitting there. Yeah, for sure. Like, where did that come from? Like, what, I, I, the question I always ask, what made Derwin James? I just say the neighborhood where I come from, just playing sideline bus on the street, on the road, wherever we playing, just how I grew up, man. It's always been, like, competition. And I feel like being able to compete against, like, everybody that I grew up with, it was, it was more people talented to me where I grew up. Like, but they just, you know, they didn't use the same opportunity or they, they may have got in trouble. But just, like I say, playing those everyday battles, for the, trying to stay stay out before the street lights come on, like just grinding, don't want to go home every day, just trying to just stay busy, man, and just stay basketball, football, no matter what it is, I wanted to win. And like, when you want to win and when you want to do something, like, nothing gonna stop you. And then that's how I just developed that and just, you know, just stay with me. It's in your name, though, James. Mike James went to UM, your cousin, right? Yeah. Edron James, everybody knows EJ, second cousin, mm -hmm. or something like that. So it's in your lineage. Why did you choose? They chose <laughs> yeah. University of Miami. <laughs> hey, yeah, for real. How did you escape following in their footsteps to go to University, I mean, Florida State University? It's crazy. Everybody asked me that. Like, my pops, he a UN fan, too. And my mom, she liked the Gators, kind of low-key. But mm -hmm. me, I was just like, I always like, man, for some reason, I liked that horse at Florida State. It always got my attention as a kid. And I'm like, man, they got some five colors. And then just that war champ, bro, I'm like, all the players, you know, that was coming out from Dion, all the great players that played at Florida State, I'm like, man, I really like they swag. And then I used to always, like, I wasn't never a guy that want to like something just because somebody else likes something. Mm -hmm. Like, I always wanted to do something because I wanted to do it. And I'm like, 
I liked it that, and I used to talk trash to them boys, like the mic and all that. I'm like, I'm going to Florida State. So along those lines, you mentioned Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. You have other greats like Samari Rowe. Yeah. When he Come was on. there, the Terrell Buckley's of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, Florida State, they have so many defenders at the defensive back position that are great, mm -hmm. not just in college, but in the next level. How much of that played into your decision making when uh, you chose to go to Florida uh, State? It played a lot. Tradition. I, I'm big on tradition. Like mm -hmm. I say, even LSU got a great, y'all know what tradition y'all got, man. But it's just from Cromartie and Dion and all those guys just seeing that Cromartie. legacy. Wow. And like when I committed my freshman year of high school, I was like, Jalen Ramsey was already yeah. there and like, you know, it, it already had, still had that swag. Like LaMarcus Joyner, he, like a lot of mm -hmm. guys that was already there. So I'm like, I want to go in the ball. I don't care who there. Like, I'm going to commit. I'm going to go there and like, that's where I'm going to be. Wow. And then from there, that, it just took off. You know, you mentioned committing as a freshman. Yeah. You said it right. Yeah. One, cats don't commit as freshmen and stay with yeah. those schools a lot of times. A lot of times it's that o overwhelming, yeah. oh my God, I can't believe my yeah. dream school wants me. And then you commit and then you start seeing other things mm -hmm. going different places. So the fact that you knew that's where you wanted to go so young is crazy. But the other thing is you were a star right away. You know what I mean? Like you come right on the campus and you fit right in. Everyone understood how good of a player you are. Like I mentioned, you know, you played DN sometimes and yeah, rushed. Yeah. How was it to acclimate so fast to the college game? And was it overwhelming at any point? I always, like, when I played ball, like, and my coaches I had growing up and stuff, they always told me, like, get a reason, give a coach a reason to play you. And, like, you know what I mean? And I always, like, felt like no matter how old you is, age limit don't never got no age on plan. So, like, I always looked at it as no matter what I'm going from Pop Warner to high school, high school to college, college to NFL, at the end of the day, it's football. Like, we, we all know what ability we got. Like, we all know what we can do. So I never really, like, try to look at it as, like, oh, it's college, oh, it's high school. Like, I always just took it as, okay, my body, this is what I got to do next. I just got to, this the next level, this the next step. And then, like, it's just like I say, my work ethic. I just feel like I always prepared myself to be ready so I ain't have to get ready, really. So that's, that's really what I stuck to. How do you stay out of trouble, man? Yeah. Because I, 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 I jumped in Florida, you know, first yeah. year rookie, yeah. rookie, yeah. you know, freshman All-American yeah. and all yeah. that, and yeah. then I started feeling myself. Yeah. They started locking my yeah. ass up. You yeah. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, wait, he not talking about, like, nah. not playing well. In the streets. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> nah, of course, like, like I hung out. I had fun, like, but I always said, man, like, don't never let nothing you do outweigh the, the main thing, like, what you trying to get. Like, I had a good time. I hung out, but like I say, I, I just was blessed, man, to be around the right people, like you say. Like, sometimes you don't even got to be doing, doing nothing wrong or you could be in the wrong situation. But I was fortunate enough to, you know, be in the right situations and just grind, man. W was it vets? Because when I look back as a grown man, I look back and I ain't really have no... I had them in the league. Yeah. And I ain't getting nothing in the league because I had my OGs that would check me. Yeah. But at college, you know what I'm saying, not even bad mouth from the time I was at Florida or the vets at Florida, but I ain't really had no vet that would check me. Yeah. Was that, you had a dude at, at FSU that would tell you, hey, bro. Yeah, come we, on, bro. man, we had leaders on the team. Like I say, Jalen was a great guy because like, Jalen really never really went out ever. Like, Jalen didn't really do nothing. He's straight ball, man. Like, literally, I tell you, like, he just straight football and like just seeing how he worked, bro, every day. He like he knew he was going to the league junior year, just how he like grinded it out, bro. Just kept the main thing, the main thing. I really seen that as a freshman. You know, I was coming in, he was a junior freshman. So I'm like, man, I'm trying to get to what he get. Like, all this here. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I wanna be over here, I got a foot over here, but I <laughs> like I honestly like this don't outweigh, this don't outweigh that. So you feel me? I'm I'm gonna put more into this and like that's what I did. You know, even with that though, you have a great freshman year, you face some adversity with injury yeah. um, in college. Yeah. And you know how it is, man. Yeah. It, it's different when you live with the same people all the time, you go to class with them, you see them yeah. walking around. How difficult was it for you to know that you're supposed to be here? The, 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 the talent I have, the, the work that I've put in, the things I've already done on the field, you're just trying to climb every year to get to that point to be drafted where you want to go. How hard was it to deal with those injuries and not being able to be out there with your boys, with your brothers, and go win football games? Man, that was so tough because, like, like you said, I grew up playing the game, but I never had been in. Like, me, me in college was, like, my first real injury where I had to get, like, surgery, anything. So I didn't really know what to expect. So, like, when I got my first, when I had my first surgery, it was just, like, it was new to me because I had never knew. And then, man, I just, like, not being out there, bro, it killed me. I ain't even know what to do, because I was like, like you said, I always like got a routine. You know, you get into a routine where you just work, you know what you're gonna do, you know you're gonna work out, you're gonna go to class. But I went mobile, I couldn't do what I needed to do, so it kind of hit me like, damn, like, 
I'm in the moment, I'm like, man, really, like, this happened. I got to really, like, get right. And my team really needed me. Like, that year we was loaded. It was me, like, Dalvin. We had a lot of, like, we had, a, like, a, a lot of guys. So it was just, like, man, not being out there. It made me more a student of a game, but, I, like, nothing outweighs playing, man. You know, like, yeah. you want to be out there. So you mean to tell me all the adversity that you've been faced with, you have an opportunity to change your entire structure of your family's background, your history of your family. Minka Fitzpatrick just got a four-year extension, 74 million. Mm -hmm. But that's your money. Mm -hmm. That's in the same ballpark of your money, yeah. not necessarily your money. Do, you, do, do those thoughts come to mind when you see someone your same caliber get a big payday yeah, it, like it that? Yeah, come to mind. Just seeing all the guys like come to mind. Like, you know what type, like I say, you know what type of player you is, you know what you have to offer. Like I always, like I said, I always believe in myself and I, I feel like my work going to show, you know, whatever I deserve, whatever that number is, my work, whatever I put in, like it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take care of itself. So like I, I, I look at it, but I don't really like, like I honestly really know I let it take care of itself because I know when I play what it look like and I know like what type of dude I am, what type of leader I am, you feel me? So I don't really. The two years that you played, mm. significant time, mm -hmm. you were all pro. Dog. Yeah. Oh. Then the two years that you was injured, yeah, it just didn't show. Like, like it wasn't there. Yeah, we know you can ball, but do you think that, that's why I brought up Fred because they called him Fragile Freddy. Right. Because mm -hmm. he was on the field, Freddy was a dog. Now, <laughs> Freddy, Freddy was gonna go get 150 easy. Right. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of times Freddy wasn't on the field, so right. it's kind of like y'all have you know. Right as of now, people are looking at you like that. Do you ever think about that? Like, yeah, you have to hell, justify yeah. that to people. No, nah, I'm trying to change that narrative for, cause for sure. And only thing I can do is like, I can't speed time up to show people that. So me, like I say, like I'm, a, I'm gonna get that off my back. I ain't worried about not being injured, cause I know what type of dude I am. Like that shit was fluke. Like everything I've been through, I feel like it happened for a reason. So I know what type of work I put in. I know what type of body I got. Like I don't really let that really bother me like that. Speaking on that, because I had to do a few things different. Yeah. Once, you know, yeah. the, the title started and the label started to follow me, I said, all right, what am I doing? Yeah. You know, I knew I was on South Beach too much. I was in club bed. <laughs> I was everywhere five, six days a week, yeah. and it caught up with me. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it would, but it, it naturally caught up with me. So I had to change a few things, nutrition, yeah. rest, et cetera. What are those things? We talked about you looking leaner, yeah. still big and yeah, ripped. for sure. What are those things that you're doing different to make sure you're available 17 games uh, throughout for the upcoming season? Well, like you said, man, the diet, that's the number one thing, man. Making sure I'm eating the right thing because, like, like you said, that's the, that's the gas. That's the oil to my engine, man. And like I said, making sure I'm resting and also, man, just making sure I ain't overworking myself because I feel like I was just, I was really, like, screening. Like, I only know one way. You guys, I I got hurt in practice, but, like, literally, like, right. you feel me, screening, like, but... I ain't gonna do it no other way, but I just learned how to work smarter, you know, from being a young guy. And like, really just, it wasn't really much that I needed to change, like, cause I, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, once I made those, the eating and just like how to, how to train and not overtrain, I feel like it helped me. Well, I can tell you this, just because of experience, right? You're, um, you're on a second leg outside of your rookie deal, but the team know, they know your value. Mm -hmm. They know your worth. Otherwise, they would have been shopping you around, mm -hmm. trying to get you out of there. Same thing with me in Jacksonville. For sure. Because you're still there, in spite of those injuries, you have time. Yes, sir. But don't don't uh, discount that. For sure. Because we have to always understand how valuable the moment is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's that that costs more than anything in life. Yeah. They know it's the next man up. Yeah. There's plenty of other guys out there that they can bring in. But because of your ability and your talent, they see that they can't let. You're a generational talent. They're banking that you have, that those are put beside you. Yeah. So don't ever get discouraged. Yeah. Just keep grinding, keep working. Appreciate that. And all that shit gonna come. Yeah, that's why I say, like, that's all why I was saying come. I can't wait till I, you know, like I said, get more time to prove, like, you know, what I, what I can do. I know what I can do, bro. Right. So I don't really be tripping. Like, I, I don't it. panic, bro. I don't... Yeah, it's funny. Like, all these things always tie in. We get an opportunity to sit down uh, with great players, but also great people. Yeah. You know, Freddie mentioned being able to change. Yeah. Your, your family's life, right, the, sure. the, the dynamic. And we often, the, the, the conversation of generational wealth has popped up on our show more recently than I think it, it really ever has. But as soon as you got to the league, man, you kept a promise to your mom yeah. about you know being able to yeah. get her a house. For what sure. was that moment? I mean, listening to you say, my mom would go to Gold's Gym and then I would have to find places to work out 
yeah. while she's working out. And then for that to be full circle of you getting an opportunity to, to do that for, what was that like? Man, I ain't gonna lie, I had a lot of proud moments. That was probably one, like, one of the proudest moments, just handing her that key and like seeing my sister, my little brother. You know, everybody's just happy, like, cause I got a little brother that live in the house currently right now, he coming up. But just seeing her smile, seeing her cry, like that, that emotion she had, it just like, it made me like think like, dang, like watching her over the years, like put food on the table, go to work. Like this how she, this like how I can pay her back. This how I can show her like all her work, like didn't go unnoticed. Right. So that's like, when I got the opportunity, like I kept, that was the first thing literally, like that was literally the first thing. Like I was like, man, I had the people already looking before. Like you feel like, like she need her <laughs> house. Like, so like, that's what I wanted to do and keep that promise though. And then, and then, you know, now you, you go full circle from being able to do that for your mom to your son's first birthday Yo. was was recently. And now we're talking about being able to take care of people who have taken care of us to taking care of the people God has charged us with, Yo, right? That, sure. that, that we are given the blessing and opportunity mm -hmm. to raise when listening to you talk about your contract situation with Fred and it's like so much goes into it because you're thinking about the responsibilities I have, how do I do best by them? And those negotiations get ugly. Like, I wasn't you. I wasn't you. Like, some of us get don't get drafted at all. As a, at all. Some of us get drafted in third round. You guys are both first round. You would have gone higher without injury. And they start to say some ugly things. Mm -hmm. You know, you might be in there, well, Ryan, you're not this. Or, well, Freddie, you aren't this. Channing, you aren't this. Durin, you aren't this. How involved are you in those conversations? Or do you try to take yourself out and let that business be handled by David Mulligetta and Los Angeles Chargers? I feel like I got the best guy doing that. Like... I feel like nobody ain't messing with David Margetta when it come to that. And I feel like he gonna take care of whatever. Like he ain't gonna leave no stone unturned. I feel like that's why you pick guys like that and build a relationship. And I feel like he gonna take care of that. So I always try to lead, lead that where it's at. And I don't really like try to pay too much attention. It's funny because you asked about the uh, Mika Fitzpatrick yeah. numbers. That's stupid. Yeah. So when my contract was up, uh, early I could just got just hit him for 10 million a year. Middle mm -hmm. linebacker making 10 million a year. My contract's up. I literally whited out Erlacher's name and put my name on there. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing good and well yeah. I wasn't Brian Erlacher. Yeah, yeah. But I just had to try him. Feel, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you do you sit back like and now and the yeah. money's stupid now. The yeah. money's stupid now compared to when we played. Mm -hmm. Do you sit back and look at the, the Minka, look at them dudes and be like, oh, Mika, they gave me Jamal. You got Mika, Jamal. Like there's a lot of guys who just Simmons. Man, I'd be lying to y'all if I said I didn't, man. Like honestly, we competitors. Like, like I said, we, we like we play the game for the love of the game, but like I said, everybody know like what they what they deserve and what they feel like they worth. So I feel like, man, always just just showing up and just working hard, that's gonna take care of itself. When we talked to Jalen, I mean, I was uh in awe you know, of, of the young guys. And I think we talked to someone yeah. that said athletes now are smarter and more Daniel engaged. Yeah. They're more engaged in, yeah. you know, their sport and the financial part of it yeah. and all of that. But talking to Jalen, you know, he said, look, if such and such didn't reset the market, yeah. then we looking at him like, man, what the f you just did? <laughs> you know, is that a mindset you guys have or is that something coming from David, like how many conversations or what are the conversations like that you have with your agent, your representation, where he's laying out everything and all the different possibilities for you through complete transparency, which is I'm sure one of the reasons you hire him, not only that he's one of the best, but what are those conversations like when it's, you know, uh, contract time? I feel like, first of all, the group of guys that David and guys we got, I feel like we got the best group of guys if you look around the league. I mean, we got all the DBs, really, that you can think of. And like you say, man, we always telling each other, man, we want to see each one of, we, like you say, we want to see each of us reset the market. Because right. all that's doing is just helping each other, family. That's all, like, that's helping everybody. So, like, the conversation we have with each other is just like, man, it's your turn to eat. Go, go do it. Like, don't bullshit it. Go do it. Like, you know what I mean? And, like, having David to, you know, be able to represent us and, you know, be that voice for us, you know what I mean? I feel like there's nobody better. That's why I say we all a team. Like, you see the shirt family ties, like, right. it really mean more. It's more than just, you feel me, a family. It's really like a relationship, you feel me? So you're 100% confident that you got a, a bulldog uh -huh. that's going to walk in those doors with your best interests at heart and say, look, 
I ain't got nothing to worry about. Just call me when we good. Man, it could be uh, man, a million percent of him. It can be going in there to get a pair of outfit. It don't got to be money. It could be going in there to get right, me an outfit. Right. I believe in my Complete guy. Like, trust. I, I, I believe in him. I love so, it. Did y'all talk about money with y'all teammates? Not really, no. Did you talk? I, we ain't no. talk money. Y'all young boy, y'all talk money contract nah, not, with y'all teammates. No, no, not with our teammates. This with the guy. Talking about with his agent. Oh, oh, no, not our teammates, bro. We, we, we trying to like grind and play. Like, like, like all, all the dudes that he's okay, like with the same. Yeah, not like that, bro. Yeah, because nah. everybody know when your contract up, yeah. then they know oh, your you contract was, You up. was talking something no. else. He was talking Tootsies and South Beach. Oh, oh man. No, no, no. He was even talking no, crazy. No, even the contract stuff, like, everybody know when your contract up. It was never time where somebody would pull me to the side and be like, hey, you know, you know, say you got to do this. For the next generation to do that. Like the yeah. con the, what, it's already understood. What DJ yeah. talking about right now, it's crazy that you are still playing. Young player. Mm -hmm. Ain't played for four years and you understand that. Like Freddie just said. Yeah. When I was your age, it didn't click. I don't know how y'all feel about yeah. it. This that didn't click to me. I was just out there playing ball. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk to nobody because about money. We weren't as smart as them. DC yeah. said it. Like yeah. they have those conversations. It's as transparent, I think, now than it's ever been because the agenda is go play ball, have fun but also get paid. You guys understand that. We did not have those conversations. There were a lot of them were uncomfortable conversations. Yep. Becomes, so a lot of guys felt animosity towards certain guys if they got the check. Nowadays, everybody getting 30, 40, 50 million. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why you know anybody would think, oh, he don't deserve that, or he don't deserve that. That's, that's just not, I like, think, it I don't think make too, no though, sense. But you also have to realize the unique position that David Mulligetta guys are in. Very unique. In the unique position of everybody gets rich. Right. Right. You don't, it's not, it's not like having a conversation with your homeboy who is going to be middle of the pack come contract time. If I'm talking to Casey Hayward, I'm talking to Landon Collins, who at one point set the market. If I'm talking to Earl Thomas, who at one point set the market. I'm talking to Kevin Byard, who at one point set the market. All these folks are being represented by the same dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not that uncomfortable conversation of, I'm sitting at this table you can't sit in, eventually we'll all be here. So I think that's the, the difference in it. And also, how do you feel social media plays a part? Because immediately when somebody signs, a, when Minka Fitzpatrick signed this contract, you got to see it right now. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to wait, you didn't have to guess on numbers, you didn't have to do all those things. Do you think that breeds more competition amongst players because you understand and know what those dudes are getting and you don't have to guess. And you also sit back and say, I've watched the film, like, I see what he's done. It's not more than what I've done. Yeah, for you sure. Know, you for start sure. to get that feeling. For sure, for sure. Like I said, I respect all the guys out there in the league, of course. But like you said, when you're looking at those deals, like, I, I feel like I know what I deserve. I feel like, like I'm the best safety in the league. So I don't, I don't like, look at, like, oh, this is what he's doing, this is what he's doing. I feel like, okay, that's what he's doing. I know where I'm at. I know where I stand. I know what I can offer. I know what I can do. So that's all I look at. Growing up in Haines City, Florida. Yep. Uh, Man, you should have went to UF, but that's a whole other <laughs> thing. <clears throat> You're a five-star recruit. Yeah. Grew up in Haines City, right in the middle of the state. Yeah. I was just telling you a second ago, in 1993, I think, yeah. um, my high school, we played there in Haines City. And uh, the game before the state championship, they beat us. Yeah. But the spookiest part, of, the craziest part about all of it is a graveyard. This is the football field, yeah. and the graveyard was right next to it. It's a 10 minute football on field event. Graveyard. Football? Yeah, it's, graveyard. it's crazy. <laughs> Ain't no and, other set of. And like what's that. coming from the graveyard that isn't coming from the football field? Fog and smog. I'm yeah. like, that shit is spooky. <laughs> 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 that shit was crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Man. What was it like growing up in Haines City? Uh, man, so I got to spend Haines City like um, from all the way up to about fifth grade. Um, mm -hmm. Man, it was just, man, it was amazing. Like I said, it was competitive, man. It's like everybody know everybody, everybody click tight. When you cross the railroad tracks, it's like, it's one family, man. And like, like I say, in the neighborhood as kids, we just wanted to be the best. Like we wanted, to, we wanted the opportunity to you know, get out and like one day play in the NFL. Like, right. and, and like I say, like I always just try to work hard to just stay away. It was always stuff here that I, like, like I always say, I never wanted to be here and be stuck there. I always right. wanted to keep, just keep going. You, you know what I mean? You mentioned being here and being stuck there. I'm from a small town. We had a lot of great players that have come through. Yeah. But unfortunately, due to grades or the, the ACT, SAT, yeah. they didn't make it yeah. to that next level. And we always go back and we call that uh, 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 All-Star U on the street, the yeah. street university. Yeah. You know, they're part of that. Are there any guys 
that you came up with back in Haines City or Arbondale that were very good players or just as good as you no. that yeah. didn't make it to the next level? I'll tell y'all the guy right now, um, his name is DJ Law. He played with me at uh, Haines City High School. He was a running back. He basically played everything I played, linebacker, safety. One Y'all can pull his film up uh, after this, but he, Man, I'm talking about every time he got the ball, like literally it was a touchdown. People stand up, like one of the most exciting players like mm -hmm. you ever seen. Like, and I, I and I feel like he supposed to be here on this level where I'm at. Right. You know what I mean? He didn't get the same cards dealt to him that I got. You know, it was his role was a little different, but I just feel like he was another example of just like, you know, one of the guys that was just super talented, right. man, that just I feel like I know that can be on the roster in the Pro Bowl, all types right. of stuff. Right. In what sense? Because we all have experienced it, right? In what sense that he didn't get the same cards dealt that you got? Because a lot of times we can go back and say we had the same opportunity. I'll tell you this, like, you know what I mean? He, his opportunity was different. He already had three kids, two, three kids in high school. We in high school, you know what I mean? It was a way different situation than my, I went home to my mom and dad. You right, feel me? I got right. a whole different, that's why I say it was a whole different situation that was presented. You know what I mean? I, I feel like he didn't get the same, like, you know what I mean? The same, same. He had more on his plate. Yeah, he had more on his plate to deal with. You know what I mean? Right. And I and I and I feel like he just took it from there. And, and I only say that, and I bring it up simply because, yeah. you know, we we want to see, especially on this show, we try to go stand, have, put positivity yeah. out in front of anything yeah. we drop, yeah. right? For sure. And it's also a teach tape. Yeah. Whatever we talk about through these conversations, our experiences, we want some. We want the viewers to come back and take whatever they can from it, yeah. right? A lot of times in our communities, those are the things that happen. Yeah. You have guys as gifted and as talented as can be, but you know, because of the maturation or the lack of, they make certain decisions and I don't want to call them mistakes, especially when it comes to children yeah. and family because that's what you're dealt. You gotta, you gotta dig deep and go take care of yours. Yeah. But if we can try and circumvent Mm -hmm. certain things, certain aspects to allow guys an opportunity to go and fulfill their dreams, yeah. we talk about it. Yeah. And, and I'm sure the people out there, they like to hear about it. So when you go and you engage the next generation of potentially great players, then they say, all right, I'm going to wrap that thing up. This is his line. This is when he comes in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a hat on it. Yeah. I ain't going to be as freaky as I can be. Yeah. I'm going to go and focus and concentrate on yeah. what I need to focus For real, on. No. For real. Because my dreams is here. Yeah. And those things happen. Yeah. Guys get tied down, and then next thing you know, yeah, it's those, different. Those, you got to think, we 17. Those dreams, 17, We 18, 17, you know, like, we, we look, we kids as ourselves, you know what Correct. I mean? So it's like, that's a lot. The, right. That's a lot of responsibility. Like me having a son right now in the position I'm in, just being in the NFL is like, it's a lot. You know what I mean? Just, right. And I can only imagine, bro. We in high school, like we ain't even. Right. You know what I mean? We ain't even live college. You, we went to college, man. Right. You know what I mean? It's way different. That's why I say. Right. When you when you look sense. at when you look at situations like that, and I think Channing even mentioned earlier about not being caught up. I tell the story all the time. There's a guy that delivers uh, mail in my parents' neighborhood, yeah. and he saw my mom, and he was like, Miss Sheila, you know, and he asked about me, and walking away, he tells my mom, I should have been right, right? Yeah. And he was, like, when we were little, he was bigger than me, and he yeah. was faster than me, yeah. and he was stronger than me, and so we all, have, we all have these stories, and there are times where certain cards are dealt, and there are also certain times where we play our cards a certain way, you know, and we've talked on this show a lot of times about accountability and, and responsibility sure. and, and understanding uh, what we have to do to succeed. When you think about where you come from, you know, how you were raised in those things, how did you avoid certain pitfalls and certain opportunities? And I'm gonna say for myself, because I don't, I don't think we ever say it enough, it's a lot of stuff that I just ain't get caught doing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm just gonna be real. For sure. It's, it's a lot of opportunities yeah. where I wasn't smart and didn't protect myself. And yeah. it just didn't happen to me yeah. that day. There's a lot of opportunity. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time and nobody happened to be, you know what I'm saying? Different yeah, things like that. Sure. So how did you avoid some of those pitfalls that are easy to get into? Well, like you said, I ain't up here like I'm just an angel. Like I ain't, yeah. I ain't have fun. Like you said, I ain't never yeah. go through the same road. But like like you say, I never I never really put myself in a position where it can, it can really hurt me. Like where I got in trouble with the law where I had to really like get it out there all over the media, all over the internet. Like, you know what I mean? I never really, I never had to deal with that. So I just try to, like I say, man, just stay focused on yeah. what I need to stay focused on. And one thing, I brought up the babies. It's not hard to put a condom on. Nah. I'd have been locked up. Like, you yeah. know what raw feels like and you know what rubber <laughs> yeah. feels like. 
So all that stuff, oh, the condom broke. Now when it breaks, as soon as that thing breaks, you say, oh, that feels too good. <laughs> Let me slide up out of there and grab me another one. So like the kid thing, man, I, no, it's real stuff, bro. I, I respect what y'all saying, but yeah, man. Now, now, listen. Party all, party hard, had a good time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I know what raw and I know what rub is. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody out there, come on hey, now, let's yeah, be honest. You know, you know what meat to meat feel like? You know what meat to meat feel like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, sure. it, it, it's different. Ooh. <laughs> Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> Holy <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> Holy! <laughs> hey, like, yeah, yeah, you gotta do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so. Okay, hold up. Yeah, we got we got to pivot on back. Pivot on back. Yeah. But you know, so let's fast forward to now, man. Yeah. Chan mentioned earlier the two years you've played. It's yeah. been undeniable. Yeah. I tweeted and said all the time. I think you're the best safety in football. Appreciate. Like even man, watching the the cool training camp videos where Keenan killing people and then you go do one-on-ones as a safety yeah. and locking up one of the best wide receivers in the league, at least going back and forth with him. Yeah. You know, you look at your team now, you were asked to do a lot mm -hmm. last year. Now you go out, you get J.C. Jackson. Uh, young Zant yeah. coming back, come, yeah. coming back at corner. Yeah. You add Khalil Mack. I was talking to Brandon Stanley at LSU's Pro Day and I'm thinking he gonna be talking to me about Justin. He just keeps talking about you. You know, if you could build around a, a great quarterback, why can't you build around a great safety? We just need Derwin to be able to do what Derwin does, this and this. When you think about this year, your division and the opportunities that you guys have yeah. to compete, where do you see the Los Angeles Chargers? I see us on top. Like, ain't, ain't no, ain't, I don't see nothing else. If we, like, we, we understand the mission. Everybody that came in, whether you're a new guy, an old guy that already been in his system, like, we all know what the mission is. We all know what the goal is. So it's not, it's, trying, it's us trying to come together, you know, and not just try to be a team just on paper or just got talent or like, we ain't trying to be that. We want to come in and really do something. And I feel like I'm going to be one of the guys that really, you know, try to help that go, you know, especially being a leader on the defense and just being more free, just being more free out there on defense and getting the ball to Justin because we know what, we got a great quarterback, bro. And you got a quarterback in this league, you could do anything. Y'all, everybody know here, everybody plays. So. The more we can get the ball to number 10, we're gonna, we gonna win. We're gonna win more than we lose, I can promise you that. Can you play different when you got Bosa and Matt coming off the edge? Heck yeah. <laughs> can you play different than you had that? Yes. Okay then. Like, but what, okay like, then. What, okay like, then. Do you, do you okay, sit yeah. I'm, you know I'm, I'm ready now. It gotta come out. It gotta, <laughs> it's coming out. Yeah, I'm going first mind. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. First yeah. mind. Ain't no guessing. Let's go. So knowing that Bosa, Matt, yourself, yeah. the young Zant, you know, just pieces on defense. Then you flip to the offense. Yeah. You know, you got Keenan Allen. Mike. Edwards. Mike. Edwards. You, you know, you got the QB. Like, you guys got everything you need to make a run. Will it be a letdown if you if you don't make a playoff? It for sure it'll be a letdown if we don't make the playoffs. Cause I feel like just looking at the guys we have around our building and like the competition we got on the side, east side of the bar, ain't no, ain't no reason why we shouldn't be playing it. But I feel like we supposed to have been in the playoffs last year. We took care of the games we were supposed to take care of, but it, it, it ain't no reason we shouldn't be in the playoffs next year. So is it a letdown if you're not in Super Bowl, whatever number it is? I don't know. To me, it's it like is. like 78,000. <laughs> nah, I don't know. Nah, because when I, because the one I won uh, a few years back. Get out of here, was just, man. This guy, uh, it was just, he nah, always, always got a chip, though. Nah, he, he got a chip. Nah, nah, it was just, a champ, nah. We always show champ, our seed nah. love. He champ, now. Nah. Look, we, Pivot merch on sale yeah. right now. Just he was a big part of that too. Nah, look, look, it wasn't just like, he was a big part of that too. Though. This is this what we had to do to get him on the pivot? <laughs> we had to go black and yellow. <laughs> and no, I ain't peep that. Look, I didn't peep that. To, to, yeah. That was part of his contract. That. That's part okay. of my deal. Okay, uh, okay. That's part of my deal. Now, nah, but on some real <laughs> shit. No, but... Merchandise live right now, everybody. Look, <laughs> no, you, know. you know, I got I'm, I'm the one that, you know, yeah. got a little asshole in me. That AFC West, that AFC West a bitch mm. now. Yeah, man, it was like I say, the, the games we played last year already came down to one possession. Like, yeah. What, what's gonna be different? I mean, it's gonna come down to one possession. Like we, we gotta come out and play. We gotta dominate. And like, like I say, the team we got, I feel like there's no reason we shouldn't do what we want to do. And uh, me being the person I am, the, the goals I set for myself and the team, I feel like we want to be in the Super Bowl, and we we gonna see ourselves in there. You, you talk about those games and, and doing one possession games, uh, Raiders, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Kansas City, yeah, one possession, uh, one possession games. What says that y'all close those games out this year? Closing is a habit. Yeah, 
You know what I mean? Like learning how to close games out, it's a habit. It's a it's it's about a feel, you know. Uh we did a show the other day and Chan was just talking about, nah, when the game's on the line, who gonna drop their nuts? Yeah. Like what what dude you what dudes you looking at like, hey man, we got it. When you think about yourself as a leader defensively, Justin Herbert as a leader offensively. Y'all got what it takes to close this year? Cause that's all it was about last year. Yeah, I definitely feel like we got what it close. Cause like you say, man, giving up those the mo- you play defense. The most frustrating thing when those third and seventeens when they get those first down, those third and 15, them third and one, like just all that, man, that third down alone, I feel like that's gonna make our team so much better. When you add a guy like Mac, where you got a chip, it's three man routes mm-hmm. now. You ain't guarding as many, he ain't five out no more. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, it's more, it's helping everybody. And a guy like JC out there that can guard number one guys, like mm-hmm. it's gonna help everybody, like, you know what I mean? Each. So I feel like as a team, getting the ball to Justin Moore is only gonna help us. Well, here, so here's my question. You know, and I need I need the honest Derwin answer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. From Haynes, it's, what is it? Haynes City, Haynes City, <laughs> with the, the the graveyard next. I wouldn't right. play that. Yeah. Uh, I, I went to a Catholic school. They probably wouldn't let us go. They were going. <laughs> they, 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 they probably no. They, they, no, they were no, going right, to go <laughs> They were going to bury your whole team right next to the field. <laughs> First off, I was on that team. <laughs> yeah, they were going to bury was y'all. Good, there. Fred. Nah, <laughs> Haynes City. We in Florida. No, we ain't act yeah, like I'll that. Go with that. Anyway, <laughs> so you know. What's happening in your division, the Raiders go out and get Devontae. They get Devontae because they got Derek, yeah, right? And, and, and they yeah. love their quarterback. Obviously, we know what that boy in Kansas City is. We know what Justin Herbert is. The Denver Broncos, Russell. they go out and get Russell Wilson. And I think mm-hmm. everybody in that division is looking like, hey, man, when the Kansas City Chiefs are dominating with that dude playing quarterback, you got to have one. If you don't have one, mm-hmm. you have no chance. You look at those four guys, how do you rank them? Number one, my guy, for sure. I'm taking my 10 over anybody. Mm-hmm. Then I'd probably say Mahomes, you got to go two. And then three, Russell, four, Carl. And so now you you getting in those games. Are you Can you have the opportunity on the sideline with Patrick Mahomes when you're going on the field, you can go say, hey, look, we're about to go out here and stop him. We're going to get this football to number 10. <laughs> and you believe in that, that y'all going to win a ring that way? I, I really, uh, honey, bro, I ain't, I, I wouldn't tell you I wouldn't be up here bush. I 100% believe that. We get this ball to number 10, y'all going to see something in year three with him. I promise y'all that. The funny thing, everybody highlight the Patrick Mahomes highlights. You know what I'm saying? That running yeah. this way, yeah. throwing behind his goddamn head and hitting people over there. <laughs> Do you think about that plan? Because it's not like playing another quarterback. Man, it's, I, it's got that Patrick Mahomes. Like, is it a difference in playing him where he can make all them crossbody throws? Yeah, it's, it's definitely different playing that boy than any other quarterback you're going to face because, man, he at his best when he outside that pocket. When he's moving on the run and, like you say, when he's looking his way, throwing that way, like, that's when he at his best. So I feel like he a lot more different than, a, like, a Russell Wilson or a Derek Carr. You know what I mean? So it's a lot different. And I got to ask about the tight ends because you, you was bringing up yeah, bring him up. That's, yeah. that's bring what clicked him up, in my mind. <laughs> That's what clicked in my mind yeah. because I was playing against Gates and Tony Gonzalez and them boys back in the day. Yeah, good. Bro, in your division, you got Darren Waller who was on the show. <laughs> that motherfucker is gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Bro, he was walking down the hallway and the lights was going off and he walked past. <laughs> yeah, it's like Candyman. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah for sure. he been, But then you got Kelsey there Kelsey too. too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who, 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 because you, you on the tight end right over him. Yeah. Is, is it one of them? Who the baddest tight end in the league right now? So I got to go with Kelsey. Kelsey I, I practice against Kittle too. I like Kittle a lot, man. I ain't gonna play, lie. Yeah. I like I like Kittle a lot, but I I gotta go with Kelsey because I feel like what made Kelsey so much different than Wall is just like him being more creative, like mm-hmm. outside of the route tree. Like, you know what I mean? When Pat moving, like Kelsey working to get open, you gotta cover him twice. It ain't just covering him one time. So like I feel like that's what makes him so like different than mm-hmm. than Waller. Waller's speed, big, like you say, like, you know, he he when Kelsey a little more, like he say, more wiggly, more yeah. jiggle to him. I think it's safe to say that the AFC West is the best division Thank in football. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the quarterbacks we name, I think all those guys are deservedly uh, top eight, all of them. 100%. Top 10? Derek, so. Derek, 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 Derek would have to be the guy you probably have questions about. But right. yeah, like all those guys hang around the top 10 yeah. for sure. I mean, you got a lot, you got to play, you got to play regardless. Is there ever a time being that you're at LA Chargers? The big team is L.A. Rams. They just won the bowl, mm-hmm. you know, and everybody, we don't need all these teams back in L.A., yeah, 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 all that other stuff. Yeah. Do you guys ever feel that you don't get the same love that they get? Man. Like, stepchild? 
Nah, heck no. Nah. We don't look at that stepchild. <laughs> and, and it's crazy because no, Jalen, Jalen, Jalen come at me with the same thing. Like literally, Jalen, Jalen always try to little bro me or like try to <laughs> little bro my little, team. And right. and it's, I'm happy we played them this year, New right. Year's too. So like he always like we was just talking about this. He was like, man, we just you know we just won a bowl. He right. just told me you know we finna repeat. I don't care who y'all at it. You know? So he be trying to, like little stuff like That's that. What I'm like you about. saying, little stuff like that for sure. Like. But like I said, we gotta we gotta earn our stripes, man. So there's a reason for you guys to have a chip on your shoulder yeah. the yeah. entire year. Yeah, for sure. Cause I, I feel like we gotta earn our stripes, man. We our franchise, we never won a bowl. We gotta earn our stripes, we gotta get a bowl. You know, they used to always talk trash about our stadium. and we ain't got no fans. But like I said, we got number 10, we got a great team, and there's gonna be a lot of bandwagon fans come too. So what are we saying? What what am I saying at the end of this season about the Los Angeles Chargers? Because Unlike any other year throughout your career, y'all got expectations now. Yep. When you get number 10 and he ends up being better than people picked in front of him, it's like, oh, they, they got a dude, yep. right? Dora James was, was healthy all year. You've now yep. added those pieces. Brandon Staley, one of the brightest young coaches in football. With, with those expectations, are we saying at the end of the year you have lived up to them? And if we aren't, if we aren't, if we're saying the Los Angeles Chargers fell short again. What could be that reason? Man, I say I start with that last question you asked me. I just say if we don't reach the full potential, it it, it got to be from us not coming together as a team, playing in one. And like like you say, everybody got to stay healthy. Everybody got to go out there. Everybody right. got to be out there at the game. Yeah. Like they, we're gonna keep it a hundred. Like you know what I mean. So yeah. if everybody out there, everybody doing what they doing. Well, when everybody out there, we're gonna we're gonna we know what they're gonna look like. And, and I feel like. We're gonna meet those expectations. So it has to be some excitement circling, not just within the community, but the players itself. What type of conversations have you had in this past offseason with the addition of JC and, and Khalil Mack and those type of players, the players of that caliber? What are those conversations like? First of all, all of them from Florida, what you just named. So it's already, <laughs> oh, like, it's a different vibe. It's a different vibe. Go. It's a different vibe from you the get-go. Like, yeah, like, like Zunt from Florida. Like Zunt from Florida. Even Joey Bosa from Florida. So like, yeah. so like, yeah. like just having that swag on defense. And like, like we all know what we here for, man. Right. And when you know what you here for, and when you know, like, I got to play my part, I feel like that's what it's going to take care of itself. And, and like, we all know, man. Like, I love getting you guys on here because, like, I watch the film and I'm doing rankings and I'm talking about people. I'm saying, well, I think this guy is this, this guy is yeah. that. But, you know, it's almost one of those things, like with Fred. Obviously, Fred was a pro bowl and all those things. But you come ask me, who'd you hate playing against? I'm like, oh, I hated playing against him. Yeah. Right? You, you always knew when you went out there. Nah, it didn't mean you were scared to go out there. Mm -hmm. It just meant you had a level of respect for him. Mm -hmm. I've watched you go play one-on-one -on -one and, and do one-on-ones with Keenan Allen. What are some of the receivers in the league that when y'all preparing for the week, you know what I'm saying? You talking to the corners or you talking to the rush, but like, hey now, y'all, y'all gotta get there. Like, yeah. like, like, dude can go. Who are some of those people you put on the level with Keenan? Uh Tyree Hill, number one for sure. I mean, when, when you play that number, fast, didn't he? When you playing number 10, I mean, you gotta know where he at. Uh I say Tyree Hill. And then like you say, guys like Waller, guys like Renfro that can, you know, that that can change the game. If you if you don't game plan them right, they can they can hurt hurt you. So Guys like that that we play, and I feel like our division the best anyway. So mm -hmm. just every division game we play, I feel like you just got to be ready to play. Did you game. just hold on one second? <laughs> Did you just start a conversation with Tyreek Hill and go to Hunter Renfro? No, yeah, it's different. Hunter Renfro, the Psychopedia sells me. Yeah, no, there ain't no Psychopedia sell me. <laughs> Hunter really liked that. Turn the film on. You watch film, don't you? I know. But I'm just trying to be devil's advocate because I just nah, man. my he, man got to receive. Nah, he underrated. Nah, he, nah, he, he got to give him some credit, man. No, he really he, is. He's he good, man. Right. Yeah, like he got he got his deal this year, and I just and like I would actually talk about it all the time on TV. I did a breakdown of him. I was like, y'all got to stop going out there looking at it. No, yeah. y'all got to stop looking at his headshot, looking at his body, and get out there. You better and guard him. You yeah, he got him. Guard him. You heard it here first, people. Hunter Renfro, fantasy but, football lovers, you got your sleeper. But Renfro. No, I understand the division, but you talking about D Hop, 
Hopkins, you talking ain't about Devontae Adams? I ain't played them. Oh, okay. I ain't played neither of them, two of them guys you just them said. Them do Mike Evans. Like, I ain't played him either. Jamar. Jamar Chase. I played uh, him. What's the y- Justin another young Jefferson. boy? Justin Jefferson. I like, the, I like all those guys. Oh, okay. But, but, but Riffro up there with them? If we naming a guy, think about it. Every week you're going to play a good running back, a good quarterback, or a good tight end if you if you being real. Like yeah. like I say, so that's why I just said the guys that I've played, the guys that we have to guard, that's that's why I said that. Of course, them guys, dogs. Shit, Tennessee, Derrick Henry, you got a team. Every team got a, a dog, but I'm just saying the guys I went against, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Hunter, no, Hunter, no he, he really is like that. Like, I was doing that to, to play devil, devil's advocate to see if I could shake you off of it. But well, right like now, that. he's kind of like stop the slot down, guy. Boy. Yeah, right. like, he, like, he could go. When you, you know, we're going to shut it down. We always say this, and you might be, he might be too young for a biggest pivot. Freddie T? Nah, that's never. the biggest pivot, but that is. So, so what we do on this show? When this show started, this show started because of a pivot. Obviously, they were doing one thing before yeah. uh, they called me, and we decided to do a show together. Yeah. And this has been our biggest, I would say, second career pivot as a group. Yeah. And now it's turned into opportunities to sit down with people like you. Mm-hmm. What do you think was the one decision, the one action, the one moment in your life where it's changed the trajectory of who you are, whether it's something that happened when you were young, high school, college, if it was battling back from an injury. But that one moment, but you can you can look back and say to yourself, okay, without this moment or without being better after this moment, there is no Derwin James. I'll say when my mom made the decision, my sixth grade year to move me from Haines City and move me to a neighborhood where I ain't know nobody. Like I ain't really and I had to really stay there all the way to my eleventh grade. I didn't go back to Haines City to my eleventh grade year. She moved our whole family. Like she seen I had a gift. And she's like, you ain't you ain't gonna be like none of them. Like you're gonna do something, you're gonna get out of here, you're gonna go to school. So me just working hard and you know, leaving high school early to go go to college, I feel like I wouldn't be able to do none of that if she wouldn't have did that. You know what I mean? So I say that moment was a big highlight for me. And then when she seen I was already committed to Florida State, that I had worked hard, I went over there and did everything I needed to do. She said, okay, 10th grade, you can move back, uh, 11th grade, you can move back and go graduate with your your homies, because you already mature, you finna go to school. So I feel like that moment kind of just, like, that that helped push me, you know? Yeah. It's so awesome, man. I think, and all of us, you know, like all of us have, whether it's a, a parent, a grandparent, there's, there's those people that we understand without their sacrifice, uh, without their without their knowledge and willingness to do for us, yeah. we wouldn't be there, man. And so listening to you talk about your mom um, has touched me the entire time. But what have you learned from your mom that's going to help you be the best dad you could possibly be? Man, how to provide and just be there for your family, like you know what I mean? Like I ain't we wasn't poor, like we was middle class, but like just like the stuff like we never went without. Like she always made sure like whatever we wanted. Red is a video game, Madden, whatever, shoes, Jordan, the new Jays. She gonna go work hard so we can get that, you know what I mean? So like, just seeing her work ethic, and like I say, from regular work, coming home to do that, and then go to the gym, and me having to find stuff to do while she work, cause she didn't just work out, out regular women work out 20, 30 minutes. It was an hour and a half, two hours tight, you feel me? So she was really like working, you know what I mean? So just seeing that, you know? You, you got an old lady? Because your mama said no. the ball. Hi. No, I got a lady. I got my, she outside. I got my lady oh, outside. Okay. Yeah, I got my lady. We got like one son right now. It sure. is, but like how hard? Uh, did she have to? Yeah, for sure. Like, I, 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 at first, like, I ain't, you know, I, I was one of those guys, man, I'm going to be single forever. I'm going to be single forever, you know what I mean? And like, you know, just watching my mom, man, you know what I mean? They actually the same sign, my girlfriend and my mama, so it's like, oh, okay. it's kind of cool. Now, I love the way you step up, man, and just, you just developing into a man, bro. And really being able to take some time to yourself through those injuries. Yeah. You know, you get a lot of time to think when you're away from the team yeah, yeah. and you put your life in perspective. With that, you know, we're rooting for you, like I spoke about a second ago or earlier, sure, about the positivity. That's what we're about here, man. Yeah. And, and we know you come from a pedigree of uh, being one of the best, sure. one of the best in the NFL. You know, uh, I didn't like turning it on TVs on Saturday to see what you would do to my Gators. Yeah, but, myself. you know, I, I always root for my Florida boys, for man, sure. when they go to the next level. So with that, uh, and you can't do this, 
because you still in the league and yeah. you on your nutrition shit. Yeah. We want to <laughs> toast happy dad with you. Appreciate yeah, that. Fam. We want to speak your next contract into, into existence. existence. Yeah. All love. And, and we hoping that it all come into play for you. Go all kill love. that shit. Hey, appreciate sure. your love, brother. Sure. Yes, sir. Hey, you got that Florida tattoo on you, too. Oh, always. I'm going to show you mine, but I, I got it, too. Oh, hey, this is real Florida, man. Yes, sir. Right here, right here, right here. Hey, everybody got that Florida. Hey, y'all got a tattoo. He got his gator, bro. So y'all can even remember that y'all from Florida. So y'all can even remember that y'all from Florida. That's why it's love. Well, it's start right there. Well, I appreciate you. Oh, you don't know. Hold up. Limitless. Take a sip of cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Get my people feeling militant. Way I'm finna get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a sip of cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Get my people feeling militant. Way I'm finna get me up.